ready to learn how we're gonna smash the crap out of the finish, we're gonna talk about it in this video. Check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtate Throws Nation. In today's video, we are covering part four of our rotational shot put 101, right? So one of the things that we showed here, and I thought it was really good to go through, showing a beginner, right? We've got our thrower number one, who's day one. We've got thrower number two, who's in week one of the rotational shot. He's been throwing for multiple years, but he made the switch. And a lot of you guys are gonna be in that situation. Thrower number three and thrower number four are multiple years, and they've been getting into more and more details. They're more comfortable, they're past thrower number one's phase, right? And for that matter, past thrower number two. So today what we, we want to review that we've obviously gone through the entire throw. We have explained that thrower number one, when we look at the speed of thrower number one, he's taken just over two seconds. Thrower number four is taken just under a second and a half. That's the thing. By the time that shot's done to out of your hand, now we're in our pillar five. And this is where you're going to see, and this is where I'm very impressed with thrower number one. It says a lot about the athlete, but it says a lot about what we're we're teaching at our events and how we're going through the process. So this athlete had gone through our biggest update on our throwing chain reaction. So if you've been to a 2019 camp, we kind of shuffled things around, put it together. And so what you're seeing, what we had set up for 2020 was this more integrated mix where you're getting to a lot of things and you're moving through and you're actually learning and understanding the connection and how the system works on a better standpoint. So here's a perfect example. Again, first day rotational thrower, 10 years old, and there's some really great positions here. So when we get to this power position, this is one of the things we want to do. We want to be on the ball this foot and you're going to notice that all of our throwers are there and you're going to see that knee pushing out and you're going to see here's our 70 foot thrower. You're going to notice he's got the longest strike path. So again, one of the things that we discussed was we have to get the lower body and the feet. So we have the legs and the foot position. So we're going to understand how those things put together sequentially. And then we have the trunk, right? And we refer to the upper body. So our, we look at our center of mass and we look at the path of the arms as we're going to come through. And again, if we have a short, a short path, or if we have a long path, and that's going to be the key. So the key that we talk about in pillar five, right? This is the beginning of the power position. So we want to come out of the throw. So we're going to go here and you're going to notice we're going to open. The arm is coming, opening out because we want to stay as long as possible through the finish. And that's what our throwers are learning to do. So look at thrower number one. He does a great job of really staying long. Thrower number two, Two is shortening that just a little bit. Pretty good path. Thrower number three is doing a pretty good job as well. You're going to see that, and but you're going to really notice the length on four and number one and number three. He's pulling it in a little bit, but if you looked at our other videos, we kind of explained what's going on in his chain reaction and why he's going to wind up pulling it ahead a little bit earlier. The thing that we're going to do is as we move here, this is what we set up. We set up the right side to be moving around. Okay, we stay on the ball of the foot. We take the left side nice and long and out. We're not smashing it yet because we're getting the body set up to hit what we refer to as our pillar six. And that's where you can see we want to stay on it and come around. And that's that long path that leads you into the throw. So you're noticing that when you see this, you see the block arm stop. See how the block arm stops? Again, block arm's nice stop on the young guy. Again, but he's kind of pulling down and that's where you're gonna see his elbow is gonna kind of drop and he's gonna lose a little bit of strike. And then you're gonna see thrower number three, pretty good, but he's kind of pulling off and he's hitting it like this instead of being able to come around and chase the shot out, which is where you're gonna see how that all squares up and you're gonna see how we get this position as we go through. So here we go. So you can see that. Look at the extension. So you're gonna notice the extension with our most advanced thrower. Pretty nice extension here on number two. Again, good extension here, but you're gonna notice how he pulled around. He's not. He's day one. He doesn't know how to hit the finish quite yet. And then you're gonna see thrower number three. A little too much jumping. He kind of pulled off of it and he didn't allow himself to come around. Again, we're more proponents of what you see the best guys in the world doing. And that's kind of what we teach the movement. We don't know exactly what they're saying, but <laughs> we're teaching the same sort of patterns to kind of create the same types of finishes that you're seeing with these throwers. So let's clear out all the lines. As we look, the one thing you're going to notice in common with all of our throwers is you're going to see this nice long counterbalance. And again, you notice our day one thrower turning around 20 five feet. So we got thrower number two who's been throwing about roughly a week and truthfully this was about maybe his 
third training session. So this guy was absolutely tapped, but you can see how much better he was moving just in a matter of a handful of hours, right? Four or five hours, and it's, it's a huge difference. Now remember, four or five hours, that's a lot of throwing, a lot of training, a lot of really specific work, and that's where the Throwing Chain Reaction system comes in. Like I said, we got the link below. Check that out because the idea here is what we want to do is show you, you need to understand the direction. That's first and foremost. If you don't understand what you're trying to accomplish from a technical standpoint, you're going to be out there working on God knows what, and it's going to be an inefficient use of your time. This is a perfect example. Thrower number one, one day, multiple hours, hitting great positions. Now, what are we trying to do? You see that his foot's a little low, but look at how nice the, the, the left arm, the block arm is. He's opening this foot up. He's got his knees loaded up. Everything's working. I mean, that's a really great position for a day one thrower, and he's 10 years old. He's got to stick to the principles that we talked about in the first videos on how do we set up like our pillar one and two, pillar three, four, which is enabling this pillar five, six. So as everything stops, now we're into pillar six. He's going to be able to start engaging the block side. You can notice we don't see that block arm yet. Now we see it. It's stopping. He's pushing. He's a young guy. Look at that position. Really great. And again, look at our, our week one thrower, right? Same thing. You see him coming through. You're starting to see blocks just a little late. He's not used to it yet. There's no timing yet. He's been traditionally a glider. Kind of hit this plateau with the glide, which is going to be real common. Now he's throwing as far in a matter of a few sessions with his rotational shot that he was with his glide. And that's that's a huge sign that he's absolutely going to be throwing much further. Now, thrower number three and four, you can see have the best positions. Thrower number four, again, one of the best all-time high school throwers in the U.S., 22 meters. You can see how he's squared up elbow in position shot great block arm hips coming through and thrower number three what you guys don't know is I because I coach him I see where are strength deficits and that's where you can see some issues and you can see how he's pulling away he's jumping and pulling away and what we're going to do is that's going to be largely due to some reaction to strength while he's setting up some good positions there's some technical there's some strength issues that are inhibiting his ability to move efficiently and that's one of the key things we want you to do so big summary Again, when we guys take it back and we look, we set up pillar one. There's very specific action. You're going to notice different actions here. I really like what day one, again, day one thrower, as I mentioned before, he's a perfect example of the updates in the system. And so you're as good as what you focus on. Here's this guy. This is the first time he's ever done it and he's hitting great position. So I really like the setup and the rhythm and he's coming here. What you don't know about pillar thrower number three is that he came from kind of a different technical model and we've retrained that and it's more efficient and he's doing a lot of really good things and I think he's gonna have a really big year coming up. Looking at thrower number two, you can see of all the throwers, he's going too fast with the upper body in and it's following the shoulder and that's what's creating some of his technical issues. So we're looking as we go to pillar two, three, so it kind of shortens up he gets a pretty good rewrap. Throwers one, three, and four, you're gonna again notice that. Notice the rewrap on thrower four. Again, he liked to style wise, he liked to have the arm low. So you see throwers like uh, Darlin Romani likes that. You see Krauser's up a little higher, Kovacs is higher, Walsh tends to be lower. So again, this is gonna be some style things that you're gonna see. And that's what you have to ultimately do. And that's what our system allows you to do is to find the best things that are gonna work in terms of what are the biomechanics and the physics say that we need to do. That's what the throwing chain reaction is all about. We're showing you how do we create those positions? How do we connect those positions? That's what we call pillar connection. And that's how, how we facilitate the chain reaction. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. You can see how all those things yield and set up these final big throws. That's the goal. Again, if you guys are uh, unfamiliar, be sure to check out the Throwing Chain Reaction system. Click the link, visit our site. We go step by step on how to teach you the right things. So we've been able to help our coaches to help thousands of athletes throw further. So be sure to like, hit that subscribe button, share this video, comment below on anything you'd like to see in the future, and we will see you on the next video.